Hi guys, it's Bernadette here, and today I thought I would bring you along as I do some collaging in my Dilutions journal. So I just have a plain black Dilutions journal, and um, I received this as an advertisement in the mail. Uh, I cut it out, and I thought that it would make an awesome journal page. One of my favorite quotes is, feed me to the wolves, and I will come back leading the pack. So that's what this piece of ephemera reminded me of, and I thought I'd make a page for you. Um, my mom purchased some napkins. She's into collage as well, and uh, she purchased these napkins, and I think it would really make a nice combination with the wolf. So uh, stay with me, and we'll get started. Okay, so the first step we need to do is to remove the backing from the napkins. Um, it always has at least one layer, sometimes two. So as you can see, I'm taking one layer off, but since it's so white on the back, you can tell that there's another layer. So I just have to get my, my nails in here and get them apart. It's a little more difficult than it sounds, but <laughs> once they come apart, the hard done hard part is done already. So, come on. There. I see light at the end of the tunnel here. There we go. There we go. Maybe. Yeah. So. The tissue is delicate, but it's not actually as delicate as you would think. It comes off pretty easy. So I always save these as well. And in another video, I'll show you what I do with them. They come in handy. I just love them. So I'm going to be using um, Vicki Booten Matte Acrylic Gel to adhere this napkin to the journal page. And I, I, I actually purchased this at Tuesday morning and it was $4.99 compared to, I guess it's regularly $9.99, but I really like it. It's uh, very matte when, when uh, you're done working. And I love to work on a matte surface. So many things can be done over a matte surface. I apply it with a hair dye brush. I find that this brush applies just the perfect amount of matte medium down. And also it's gentle enough not to hurt the tissue. As well as it's durable enough to just wash out quickly and it never gets sticky or gunky so I love that so I am just going to push put this napkin here over the book and decide exactly what part of the napkin I want to use I really like that it has several tones of blue in here so I'm going to keep those I think I might want some darker blue towards the bottom and the lighter blue on top here. So let's see, I'm going to just put this over that. And yeah, I like the way that looks. So I'm gonna remove this, squirt a little bit of the matte medium or matte acrylic gel, it's the same thing. So if you don't have this brand, any kind of matte acrylic gel, um, will work. There are so many brands out there. It's not even funny So I am just going to brush this over All over the page and I'm just going to be fairly neat once I get close to the middle of the book here or the seam of the book And a little of this acrylic gel goes a long way, too. You want to really make sure that the acrylic gel is put all the way to the ends, because if it's going to come up, 
that's where it will start to pill up and you don't want that. Okay, so I have plenty on my page and I actually have some left over on my brush. So I'm gonna put this aside. I'm going to lay this down, try to get it fairly straight. It's very sticky, so this part can be challenging. There we go. Perfect. And I'm not going to worry if I have um, some small wrinkles. That is going to happen. You're never going to get it completely flat. And you know, I actually like the texture. I don't want it completely flat because you're going to see I'm going to use some Vicky Booten crayons and Crayola crayons to go over this to kind of make it a little bit more interesting. So there we go, that's on, glued on there. Then I'm gonna take the excess that I have left over and I'm just going to lightly, yet quickly, go over the top of the napkin. And the reason I'm doing that is because I am going to use those crayons and it helps the crayon to um, be, it helps the crayon to go a, a little bit further. And I'll show you what I mean in here in a second. Okay, so that's, that's done. Now, since this is kind of damp, what I do is I just kind of go along the edge of the napkin, like so, all the way around the edge. And then that usually will allow me to just tear it and it doesn't have to be perfect along the bottom because I'm gonna go over it with the crayons. We just wanna get it as close to the bottom as we can. Sure, I'm still in frame here. I have the oddest little setup here to record for you guys, so it's challenging. I'm actually working on a very weird slant. I know it looks straight to you, but to me it's a very strange slant. I'm just gonna do the same around. I'm actually going to dip this brush in a little bit of water to help peel that away. The wetter it is, the easier it'll peel away. And then once I'm done, all done with the page, what I do is I usually go back and I I trim it because I don't like the collage elements sticking out. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry it here for a few seconds. Excuse the noise. Go. 
go. That's fairly dry. Dry enough for what I want to do with it anyway. In a perfect world, we would let that dry for a couple of hours, but I'm not that patient, so I'm not going to do that. Now I just want to measure and decide where I want to put my ephemera piece here. And I think I like it right there. The only thing I don't like is it looks like it's cut off. So I'm just going to take a scissor and kind of round kind of round those bottom corners off just a little bit so it doesn't look like it's just boom, cut off. There. That looks a little bit more finished to me. I'm going to turn that over add some more of that acrylic gel. Again, I'm going to use my hair dye brush. I picked this up at Sally's, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was like a quarter or something like that. Very inexpensive. But I love it. I love it for applying anything messy, gesso, matte medium, anything like that. I'm gonna go over the top as well and just make sure that that's stuck down really, really good. There we go. And now that's stuck down, but yet it has a film over it, so when we use the crayons on it, it's gonna help the crayon to spread easier. So here I have a whole little container. These are Tim Holtz Distress Crayons. I use those as well as, these are actually um, from Crayola, and you know what? I really, really like them. They come in a nice pack. The price is very fair. And they're a lot of fun to work with. They're very versatile. And then I also work with some Vicky Booten crayons as well. Um, they come in different colors. And I picked these up at Tuesday mornings. And um, they were a very, very fair price. But now I was at Tuesday morning the other day. And I saw that they were actually on clearance. So if anyone's interested, check Tuesday morning out. And they're really good. Good quality. And then I have some gelatos. I don't tend to use these as much as my other crowns. And I really don't have a good reason why. They work really well. And they come in a lot of beautiful colors. So anyway, this seems like it's fairly stuck down. I think I might have to add a little bit more matte medium right here just to get this edge down it might not be sticking as well because um, the page still is a little damp I think that's good it's certainly stuck down enough for what my purpose is so there we go Okay, so I'm done with this brush. I'm gonna just stick it in some water so it won't get gunked up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the crayons and I'm gonna start with black. And I'm going to add a little bit more color around the edge of this ephemera piece. And then I'm gonna use my finger and just kind of smudge it in very technical term there guys smudge it in <laughs> and it helps soften the edge of the wolf and it almost looks like he is at the bottom of some clouds or something like that so i really like the way that looks i'm not going to add a whole lot of black because i like the variation in the colors of blue there we go. And let's see, I think I'm gonna add some white 
up here at the top. I love the way that moon looks and the stark white next to it just oh, looks amazing. Add some more white here. And I think I'm going to add some blue as well. And see, when you just take the, your finger and you smudge the crayon, it helps it spread out so easily. It's very easy to work with. And all the crayons do that. That's what um, the matte medium actually helps with. So I have that blue. Now I'm going to go over it, this part, with the white again, because I do like that firm white line there. Yeah, I like the way that looks. And I'm going to just draw a little bit of a white shape and blend that in a little bit just to add some variation. And I want it to kind of look like clouds. And if we didn't have matte medium over the top of this, it would be a lot harder to get the effect that I'm going for because the crayon would not blend as easily and effortlessly as it is now. There we go. Looks like clouds. I'm going to put just a couple over here. Now what makes something look really nice is when you have stark contrasts in color variations. So for example, I have the white against the black and that helps to give it depth. And um, I think what I'm going to do here along the bottom is I'm going to add some more blue, kind of help camouflage where that napkin tore a little bit and just add some variation in color. There we go. Adding depth. I'm going to go over some of this white here. And it's just going to help us add more hues of blue and make it look more realistic. And it's just a matter of blending it, adding some, taking some away. Um, until you get it just exactly the way you like it. So I'm going to actually go in here with just a hair of yellow. I think yellow in a night sky looks really good too. And I'm going to actually go over it with one of my dirty fingers here. I'm going to wipe it off a little bit, but I'm not going to be too careful or precious about it. Just enough so it, where it won't turn bright green on me. I don't want it to be green. I just want to have a little greenish hue to it so it'll maybe look a little eerie. Going back with some more white. Or I want it to be a little stark. Oh, I just love it. It's exactly what I was going for. Perfect. Not literally perfect, because we don't want to go for perfection. And that's what I have a very, very difficult time with when I'm working in my journal or actually anything. 
um, I tend to want it to be absolutely perfect. So I'm trying to train myself that when things don't go absolutely 100% the way I want them, to be satisfied with that and not to let perfectionism get in the way because if you do that, it kind of robs you of, of a lot of the fun that you're going to have just playing with your supplies. And just sometimes playing with art supplies and playing with color and layering the colors on top of each other is all we need for a little art fix during the day. And sometimes that's all the time we have time for. There we go. So I like the fact that the wolf is kind of shrouded in that white and blue. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to take, this is the Jane Davenport storybook pen and it's in white and I'm just going to add some stars to it. Gonna clean it off because it will pick up some of that color of the crayon, which I don't want my black, my white pen to turn black on me. So I'm just wiping it off. And then I am going to go in with some. Dilutions. London Blue Shimmer, and I'm just going to lightly mix it up. You can see that with these, all the shimmer stays at the bottom there. So I'm just mixing it up lightly. And I just want this night sky to have just a touch of color to it that has the shimmer as well. Now. As you can see, the sprays don't work very well with, with the shimmers once they've been sitting for a while, but that's okay. I just kind of take it and hit it because I don't want it to be shimmery all over. Just want hints of the shimmer. There you go. And the same goes with the white. Now I'm going to turn around and add a little bit of the white. Now this has to be mixed up really well because the pigment stays at the bottom. And this should never ever be stored upright. So I saw in Diane Reevely's um, video that she suggested maybe putting some hot glue here at the bottom so if you go to stand it up it will never really stand up for you and that way um, you won't forget and you won't try to store it standing up so I did that and it really helps me to remember not to store it standing up come on sprays only thing I love this pink but it is frustrating because every time I go to use it I always have to fight with it before it will start spraying I've tried everything I've tried putting it in other bottles I've tried cleaning out the sprayer Whoop. Ooh. okay now that worked that's way too much that I didn't want that much, but that's fine. We'll work with it. I'm going to move this book and uh, a lot of the paint was flaking off the lid. So I'll be right back. Just hold on one second.
There we go. The only thing I do not like about this is this dot right here. So I'm going to just use some crayon. There we go. Cover that dot up. Use some more white here. Cover those dots up. And then I'm just going to make little marks. There we go. And I think I am going to call that good, guys. Um, on this other page, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out my quote. And when I'm all done with that, I will uh, show you what the finished product looks like. I'll be right back.